vehicle, they can eventually kind of fuse together. And then when I pull them apart, as you can see, it's kind of stuck there. I'm not holding them there, right? You can see the seals are stuck. As I pull it apart, if they were to get stuck due to heat, they could rip the seal. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now in today's video, we're going to be looking at how I personally maintain my spare parts for my dry suit. And just like a spare parts kit for your standard scuba gear, you need a spare parts kit for your dry suit as well. So we're going to be opening mine up. I'm going to show you what I keep with my dry suits. And this is all my dry suits. I have a kit per suit. And I'm going to show you how I maintain spare parts such as extra wrist seals and extra neck seals. And I'm going to show you how I keep them in good working order even when I'm not using them, when they're just laying there, because I want them to be able to be used at any given time when I need them. I should be able to just pull a seal out, replace it, and then continue on with my dive. So with that being said, let's jump into my spare parts kit, see what's in there, and I'll show you how I maintain it. All right, guys, so I've got my spare parts kit. This is actually for my Scuba Force dry suit, which is one of my trial limbs. It's the green and black suit that you've seen in a couple of videos. And each of my dry suits has the exact same components in a spare parts kit. As you can see, I just simply keep them in a Ziploc bag, and there's just a couple smaller bags inside it, and we'll go over each component, what it is for. Now, I do have one dry suit, which is my neoprene dry suit. It does not have the same parts in it. Uh, primarily in that particular uh, situation, all I keep in that spare parts kit of course, is a little bit of aqua cell because it is a neoprene suit. And in, in the event that I get a little hole in it, I can patch it up really quick with some aqua seal and I don't really need much. But for all my bi -lam and tri -lam suits, these, this is what I carry for a spare parts kit. Now we're going to go ahead and open it up and look at each component real quick. And then I'll show you how I use some of this stuff. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how I maintain it because maintaining your spare parts kit is going to be essential for you to maintain your dry suit throughout both the winter and summertime season. So I'm just going to open it up here and see what all's in it. Uh, first of all, this is a quick little travel kit that I keep with me. It's got some talc powder. It's got some uh, lubricant for zippers. It's got some zipper ease and zipper tech stuff like that in it. It's got a couple extra spare O-rings. These are for my uh, rings for both my wrist seals and for my glove system as well. But that's a quick little travel uh, kit that I can just take with me if I need to really quick and I don't need the big kit. This is a great little kit to carry. Moving on down, of course, I have several extra um, condom catheters here. If you know what a P-valve, we talked a little bit about that in a previous video. These are just extra condom catheters that I keep in there. Um, I've also got a neck ring. Now, neck rings are really useful, especially if you're a dive instructor. So if you're going to be teaching a class and you're going to be wearing your dry suit on land for quite a while, what the neck ring actually allows you to do is put it on and it allows you to pull your neck seal around it so you don't have that tight squeeze effect around your neck the whole time. It also allows the suit to breathe quite a bit too. So if it's in, a, say, you're teaching in a warmer month environment or whatnot, it's going to allow you to breathe out your suit versus just sitting there and sweating really bad in it. So I carry a neck ring in it as well. I carry spare seals. Now in here, I should have one to two extra neck seals, and then I usually keep a couple of pairs of wrist seals, both silicone and latex, depending on what I need. Now, this is what we're really gonna focus on maintaining, and I'm gonna show you towards the end of the video how I maintain these seals so that they'll last me quite a while. Uh, the next bag, this is my equalization tubes. I know you can't see it very well, but these are my equalization tubes. These are for my wrist seals in a uh, tri limb suit where I've got my waterproof gloves or my dry glove systems. That's what that is. And then these extra O-rings actually go for a different dry suit. These are just spare O-rings for the glove lock system. Um, and then I've got a little bit of silicone lube there for those O-rings as well. Moving on down, I've got some goop. This is just the marine version of Aqua Seal. It's the exact same thing. So I always keep a little extra of this if I need to dab it on a little hole or something like that, or if I need to do a quick patch on a suit in the field, that's what that is for. Aqua Seal works the exact same. That just happens to be the marine version. 
And then this is just an extra little silicone um, pack I've got as well. And I've got a little bit of bowstring wax here. And I've talked about this in an older video, why I use bowstring wax. This is very similar to paraffin wax, and it's a whole lot cheaper as well. This works great for zippers, especially for brass tooth uh, zippers. It's going to work really good to keep them lubricated very well. I've just got some standard zipper lube there and some tie zip lube too. So it's all basically the same thing, but that's what that is. This is zipper care only. And then moving on down, of course, I've got my little tool here. This is a SciTech um, combi tool, and this is used to replace the neck seal and a quick change seal. So that's what that is. And then I carry a couple extra spare patches. And these, now, these spare patches um, are for bilaminate and trilaminate suits, and it usually takes a while for the glue to cure, but if you need to patch up a suit without sending it off, I can do that with a couple extra spare patches. And then I've got my talc bag as well. Now, I'm going to show you here briefly how we use the talc bag, but basically with the talc bag, I can sit there and lubricate my seals, both neck and wrist seals, and you can see it's going to keep it nice and lubricated. And I'll show you really quick how I apply that to the seals. And then we'll jump into how do we maintain seals when we're not actually using them. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you really quick how I talc my seals. Now, I'm going to show you on a wrist seal, but you do the exact same thing with the neck seal. The neck seals tend to be a little bit easier than the wrist seals. Um, but basically, all I'm going to do is take the talc bag, and I'm going to set it right inside the seal, and I'm going to shake it around and kind of pop it back and forth. If you don't know what a talc bag is, you can actually make these. You don't have to go out and buy them. It's just a little bit of piece of felt is all it is. And I've actually got a video in the past showing you how to make these. I'll try to link it down below for you as well. But it's just a piece of felt, like a square piece of felt. You take some talc powder. I just get mine from my local barber here. And pour your talc powder in it. Pull the corners up. Tie it off. And then all you got to do, if you watch, see how my hand's clean? I just take the bag and I just kind of pat it like that. And that talc comes through that felt. And then, of course, what it's going to do is lubricate the inside of my seals, whether it's a wrist seal or a neck seal. But show you really quick how I do that. I'm just going to open up the seal, stick the bag in, and just give it a little shake like that. And as you can see now, the inside of that seal is completely lubricated. It's going to make it very easy to slide my hand through. Now, I'm going to do that with both seals. Now, I tend to do the outside portion of it too. It doesn't really matter, but what it does do is it keeps it from dry rot now a little too quickly. And if you guys know how we dive, we do a lot of public safety and a lot of salvage work. So we're getting a lot of material and uh, hazmatic material on our suits. So we want to keep them in good working order. Now, all of our tri limbs, we can quick change the seals. We just pull them out, uh, put new seals in, we're done. But we still want to try to maintain these seals as much as possible. But it's as simple as that to maintain that. I'll show you really quick too on the neck seal, how easy that is to do as well. Now, typically on the neck seal, what I would do is unzip the suit and do it from the inside out. But I can show you if you want to do it from the top part, you just open the seal up. Put your little talc bag in, swirl it around a couple of times, and very easily you'll see that the entire inside of that neck seal now is nice and lubricated. It's going to make it a lot easier. And I'll show you one more time on the other wrist seal. I just simply open it up, pull the seal out. I'm going to take my talc bag, stick it inside the seal like so, pop it around a couple of times, and then just like that, the inside of that seal is perfectly lubricated. I'm going to go ahead and do the top of it too. This just helps maintain it a little bit when the dry suit's in a bag. So very simple. And then I'll do the top of the neck seal too. It doesn't really matter on the outside, but it does help it. And just that little shake there, you can see it's nice and smooth now. It's not going to stick to itself. It's not going to um, deteriorate over time if I'm not using the suit, especially during the summertime months. But now that we've done the suit, let me show you actually how I maintain my spare seals, whether it's a rec, uh, wrist seal or a neck seal, so that these are going to last and be ready to use anytime I need them. All right, guys, so I've got all my spare seals out, and we've talked about this in a previous video, and I'll kind of reiterate in this video why I do or why I choose to use the seals that I do. Typically, I do prefer the silicone seals. I think they are a little bit more comfortable than the latex seals, and they're going to be more versatile, too, in the event if somebody is actually allergic to latex. But this is primarily just for my wrist seals. When it comes to a neck seal, I actually prefer the 
latex neck seal over the silicone. And the reason being is I think that, and from my experience, the latex tends to hold up a little bit better from the environment or the abuse that it gets from the environment than what a silicone seal does. And since I wear dry gloves, my silicone seals rarely get any type of um, wear and tear from the environment because yes, they seal my suit, but my dry gloves go over that and then they're rarely ever getting wet. So when we do salvage work, when we do public safety work, these seals tend to last a long time because they're not being exposed to the environment. However, with my neck seal, it's always exposed. And even if I wear a hood, that hood is a neoprene hood. Water's still gonna go in and around it. And then where the seal actually seals to the suit, it's also gonna get a lot of exposure to the environment. So I believe that the latex, at least in my experience, the latex has held up a whole lot better than what the silicone does, though it's not quite as comfortable. But since it gets more exposure to the environment, I tend to like it better for a neck seal. So how do I actually take care of these? Well, it's gonna be no different than how I take care of the seals on my suit. And I'm gonna show you two different ways I do it. I'm actually gonna start with the uh, wrist seals first. And these are just standard Cytec silicone or silicone wrist seals. I'm gonna start by turning it inside out. And I'm just gonna take my little talc bag and I'm gonna talc all over it, just like so. Not much, just enough to get it lubricated. Then I'm gonna turn it right side out again and I'm gonna talc the outside, real simple. And that one is officially done. I can take it, I can put it back in the bag and be done with it. And then I'll simply repeat the process with each and every one of these seals. Now, if I've got a little bit larger storage bag, especially for the neck seals, I'm gonna show you a little bit different way that I do it. And instead of using my talc bag, I'm actually going to take the container here. And like I said, I just get this from my local barber. You can get it just about any scuba shop's going to sell it, or you can order it online. But I'm just going to take a little bit of that talc powder, and I'm going to put it in a bag. Not much at all. It doesn't take very much, as you can see. And then all you've got to do is take your seal, your spare seal, place it down in the bag. You can do this right side out, inside out. It doesn't really matter because now all you got to do is just shake it up and get that talc powder all over that seal, just like that. And then it's done. You don't even have to take it out of the bag. You can leave it in the bag to seal. Now I'm actually gonna do that with the other three wrist seals as well. I'm gonna put them in the little storage bag, put a little talc powder and just shake it up. Now I want you to kind of understand why I do that. The, these two silicone seals here, you can see that they stick together. And if I'm say traveling somewhere that I'm taking a dry suit but it's warmer or maybe it's inside the vehicle, they can eventually kind of fuse together. And then when I pull them apart, as you can see, it's kind of stuck there. I'm not holding them there, right? You can see the seals are stuck. As I pull it apart, if they were to get stuck due to heat, they could rip the seal. But if I take just a little bit of talc powder here, and I'll just do the outsides of these so you can see. If I take just a little bit of talc powder, now, they don't stick together. I can rub them together. They're very smooth. If the top parts, they're still gonna stick because I didn't talc that. But down here at the bottom, it keeps them lubricated. And the same principle applies to the inside. I can push it together and it's very tacky. But if I take just a little bit of talc powder and put it in there, now it's very smooth, it's slippery in there. And by maintaining these seals in the event that I need to change one real quick, I'm always gonna have them on the ready and ready to go so that I don't have to stop diving, I can continue my dive. So I'm gonna get these finished up real quick, get them stored back, and then I'll give you some final thoughts on how you can maintain your spare parts for your dry suit. All right guys, so the last little tip that I'm gonna give you on how to maintain your spare parts for your dry suit is go diving. Put your dry suit on, go jump in the water, and go diving. If you don't pull your dry suit out of the bag or take it out of wherever you store it and check it every so often, then you're not going to know to check your spare parts. So one of the best ways to maintain parts for your dry suit, whether it's spare parts or even the suit itself, is simply put it on and go diving. Get out there and go dive. Check your suit. Make sure you clean it after every dive. Make sure you prep it for storage before you put it up. And not only will your suit last a long time, but so will the spare parts. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions on dry suit diving, put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. We're gonna try to get two or three more of these videos out before the end of the new year. And hopefully it'll help you maintain your suit and hopefully it'll keep you a little bit more educated as a diver as well. But if you liked the video, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always guys, we appreciate your business.